Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the presentation form of our experience paper about scenario-based testing of automated vehicles. My name is Paul Wells. I was a research engineer on this project, and I'm also a senior associate of autonomous vehicles at AAA. Uh, I will spend just a couple minutes up front here introducing the project participants and maybe giving a quick glimpse into the motives behind this work. Ultimately, uh, Mihao, my colleague from University of Waterloo, will share our findings and some of the, some of the details of, of this project. First of all, I'd like to thank just a couple people at the, out, at the outset here, without whom this work would not have been possible. Uh, Dr. Christoph Jarnetsky is the Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Waterloo. Christoph also leads the Intelligent Systems Lab, at, uh, the WISE Lab at the University of Waterloo and was generous enough to, uh, to make available the Autonomous Research Vehicle as well as a team of uh, very qualified researchers to support this work. So thank you, thank you very much, Christoph. Separately, I'd like to also thank Dr. Sven Biker. Sven is Managing Director of Silicon Valley Mobility and served as a technical advisor throughout both the scoping and execution of this project. Um, so thank you very much, Sven, for, for all of your help. Finally, a, a paper about uh, field testing of autonomous vehicles would not be complete without a picture from the field. So um, I thought I would partially kick things off here um, and offer the audience a glimpse into the autonomous vehicle and our time in Canada. Um, without further ado, I will, I will hand the presentation over to Mihao Enkiewicz from the University of Waterloo to share our findings. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for the introduction. My name is Mihao Enkiewicz, and I'm a research engineer at the Waterloo Intelligence Systems Engineering Lab, led by Professor Krzysztof Czarnecki. In this paper, we consider four modes of scenario testing automated driving system equipped vehicles. The subject vehicle was the University of Waterloo research platform called UW Moose, which was the first automated vehicle to drive on public roads in Canada. Scenario testing is a whole system testing approach whereby the subject vehicle's behavior and performance are evaluated in a set of predefined scenario tests, which include specific study environment as well as dynamic agents behaving according to a test choreography. In this work, we executed six scenario tests to exercise the automated driving system of our subject vehicle. Traffic jam assist, where the subject vehicle follows a principal other vehicle in stop and go traffic. Subject vehicle merging into a cul-de-sac with regular traffic. Subject vehicle turning left at a stop with an occlusion and the principal other vehicle emerging from behind the occlusion. Subject vehicle exiting a roundabout with road debris subject vehicle turning right at stop with a pedestrian, and subject vehicle driving straight with a pedestrian crossing in front of it. We executed the six scenario tests using four modes of testing. The first one is called close course with real actors, where the automated driving system controls the subject vehicle, but the principal other vehicle is manually driven. Closed course with surrogate actors, where the automated driving system controls the subject vehicle, but the surrogate pedestrian is on a remotely controlled robotic platform. Simulation, where the automated driving system controls a high fidelity model of the subject vehicle in a simulated environment. Mixed reality, where the automated driving system controls the subject vehicle in a mix of real and simulated environment. In our case, the principal other vehicle is simulated and it is visible in the simulator bottom left, but it is not visible in the camera image top left. The right side of the image shows LiDAR sensor data and bounding box zero of the principal other vehicle. We executed these scenario tests using the four modes of testing in order to answer the following research questions. What are the trade-offs among the four testing modes? Which testing modes are better for which testing use cases? What are the analytical and empirical differences among the modes? How can we compare the four testing modes? To enable the comparison, as well as to capture our experience, we derived a testing method that outlines the elements of each scenario test. Each mode then inherits and possibly specializes the elements of the scenario. So the testing method is general, 
whereas the testing modes are particular implementations of the method. The test method stipulates the following scenario test elements. Test purposes are the capabilities of the automated driving system we want to confirm function properly. Textual description is an informal description of the test setup, environment, choreography, and other conditions. High definition map provides the context for the choreography. Choreography is a formal and executable specification of the test execution, which includes the placement and the behavior and coordination of agents. Metrics are the measurements that need to be collected to evaluate the performance of the subject vehicle. Success and failure criteria allow for determining whether the subject vehicle has passed the test. In general, the subject vehicle fails the test if it crashes, exceeds the time limit, and fails to reach the goal point. Instrumentation captures data needed for calculating the metrics and evaluating success and failure criteria. Execution preparation are the specific activities required to enable the execution of the test, such as placing physical objects and coordination among the agents. A useful technique is to perform a dry run of the test, whereby the subject vehicle is driven by a person, while the automated driving system operates in a shadow mode that is without the ability to actuate. Number of runs refers to the minimum required number of valid runs of the test. Valid runs are the ones that conform to the choreography, instrumentation is working correctly, and the collected data is properly saved. In general, the more inconsistent behavior of the subject vehicle, the more runs are required until the consistent classes of behaviors are observed. Finally, data pro post-processing and analysis determines the results of each test run, as well as compute statistics over multiple test runs. Usually, the test purposes, the description, the high definition map, choreography, metrics, and success and failure criteria remain the same for each testing mode. The remaining elements must be specialized for each mode. Let us now examine an example scenario test. Left turn at stop with occlusion. The purpose of the test is to determine left turn at stop capability with limited visibility. The textual description contains some key information and criteria, however it is not directly executable. In this test, the principal other vehicle emerges from behind an occlusion, driving at 56 km per hour, 5 seconds after the subject vehicle has come to a full stop. The high definition map represents a concrete T intersection with a stop sign at our closed course. The location contains a natural occlusion which limits the field of view of the subject vehicle. The map serves as a context for the choreography as well as it is used by the automated driving system. Choreography is a concrete and formal representation of the scenario test that precisely specifies how the test should be executed. The figure shows the subject vehicle which is expected to drive towards the goal G1. On its way, the subject vehicle will pass through a trigger T, which will in turn initiate the movement of the principal other vehicle along this trajectory. The choreography is specified using GeoScenario 1.1, which is an open source executable scenario definition format developed at WiseLab by Rodrigo Queiros. We are currently extending the format with composable maneuver models that will make the simulation agents able to respond to the behavior of the subject vehicle and perform complex maneuvers such as overtake and cutting. The key idea is that the same choreography should be reusable across all testing modes. The key metric we consider in this scenario is the front bumper of the subject vehicle to the rear bumper of the principal other vehicle longitudinal range. For the automated driving system to pass the test, the subject vehicle must resume the movement 3 seconds after coming to full stop at the stop sign, stop and yield to the principal other vehicle emerging from behind the occlusion, and continue the left turn. In general, the instrumentation should capture the kinematic data of both the subject vehicle and the principal other vehicle to allow for calculating the range metrics and evaluating the success and failure criteria. For this scenario test, we aim at four valid runs. 
During the data post-processing and analysis, we check data quality, perform spot checks, verify adherence of the run to the choreography, identify key events, such as the subject vehicle yielded to the principal other vehicle, and calculate statistics over multiple runs, such as the mean minimum longitudinal range. Let's look at the implementation of this scenario test at the closed course with real actors. First, we instrumented the subject vehicle and the principal other vehicle using a dual antenna GNSS IMU sensor and data logger. Additionally, we recorded the subject vehicle's internal sensor data. To prepare for the test execution, we practice the choreography to obtain the right timing so that the principal other vehicle emerges from behind the occlusion five seconds after the subject vehicle has stopped at the stop sign. We use the horn to signal to the principal other vehicle to begin accelerating and we gradually increase the signal delay after stopping to ensure safety. During data post-processing and analysis, we utilize the data streaming, plotting and metrics calculation capabilities of the accompanying software. This video shows a run of the left turn at stop with occlusion scenario test at the closed course from the point of view of the subject vehicle. In the top left camera view, we can observe the moment the principal other vehicle emerges from behind the occlusion. And we can see the subject vehicle stopping again to yield before continuing with the left turn. In simulation, we would like to replicate the execution at the closed course so that the test results can be compared. We take the recorded trajectory of the principal other vehicle from the closed course execution and use it for the principal other vehicle path and speed profile. Next, we define the trigger delay so that the principal other vehicle emerges from behind the occlusion at the same time as during the closed course execution. That ensures that the subject vehicle will first be able to perceive the principal other vehicle the same way as at the closed course. In order to replicate the closed course execution, the simulator must delay the publishing of the agent bounding boxes by the perception delay of the real car. Otherwise, the automated driving system in simulation would be able to react to the principal other vehicle sooner than in reality. The simulation must also replicate the natural occlusion to ensure the same field of view. The figure shows the occlusion in reality on the left, and on the right we can see the occlusion closely replicated in simulation. This video shows a run of the left turn at stop with occlusion scenario test in simulation from the point of view of the subject vehicle. In the data view on the right, we can see the occlusion limiting the LiDAR sensor field of view. In the top left camera view, we can observe the moment the principal other vehicle emerges from behind the occlusion, and we can see the subject vehicle stopping again to yield before continuing with the left turn, as we have seen previously at the cor closed course. Moving on to mixed reality. The simulator can run in a mixed reality mode in which it uses real sensor data, for example GNSS IMU data and real speed, instead of the data from the vehicle model. We install the simulator on the onboard computer of the subject vehicle and run the simulation scenario. This video shows a run of the left turn at stop with occlusion scenario test in mixed reality from the point of view of the subject vehicle. In the simulator window, bottom left, we can see the representation of the real subject vehicle 
passing through a green trigger, which initiates the movement of the principal's other vehicle. The simulator also shows the behaviors executed by the subject vehicle. When the principal other vehicle emerges from behind the occlusion, the behavior switches to yield. The figure shows minimum range measurements as black dots across four runs per each testing mode. The red line represents the mean of the four measurements. We can easily observe that the runs in simulation are grouped closely around the mean, whereas the measurements at the close course are spread apart. The outlier minimum range of 4.5 meters is likely due to the delay in triggering the principal other vehicle, allowing the subject vehicle to creep further into the intersection which resulted in a shorter minimum range. The mixed reality measurements are closer to the closed course measurements, both in the spread and the actual values, which highlights the impact of driving a real vehicle compared to driving a vehicle model in simulation. We compare the four testing modes along eight dimensions. First being reality. Simulation testing relies on models of the subject vehicle dynamics, powertrain, sensors, and the road environment. Models are abstractions of reality and thus always lack some realism. At the other end of the spectrum, although still a proxy for the target road environment, closed course with human road users, pedestrians, manually driven vehicles, is reality. The use of surrogates further limits realism, which may be a problem for testing advanced functions such as pedestrian intent recognition that relies on interpreting pedestrian gaze, body language and gestures. Mixed reality fits in between simulation and the other two closed course modes, with the subject vehicle and parts of the environment and sensors being real, and some of the environment and the sensors being simulated. Effort and cost. Closed course testing with real or surrogate agents is time consuming and expensive. For example, it required three engineers over two days to execute all six scenarios with physical actors on the closed course after weeks of preparation. Test run executions were also time consuming and subject to human actor mistakes and hardware problems. In a stark contrast, defining scenarios in GeoScenario and executing them in simulation took minutes. Executing six scenarios four times, each for a total of 24 runs, took less than an hour on a single desktop and was completely automated. Mixed reality eliminated the physical test setup and the potential hardware problems for all of the virtual agents. As a result, a single engineer was able to execute all six scenarios in mixed reality on the closed course within half a day. On the other hand, the need to increase simulation fidelity may significantly increase the cost for the simulation mode. Agility. Simulation offers the highest agility by providing a convenient platform for creating new scenarios and modifying them. A useful technique called fuzzing can be used to generate new scenarios by automatically varying some aspects of a base scenario. Modifying tests at the closed course may require re reprogramming equipment and rearranging props and can take minutes to hours. On the other hand, simulation tests can be modified in seconds. Mixed reality offers the agility of simulation at the closed course. Scalability. Thousands of simulation tests can be run in parallel in the cloud. The closed course testing modes cannot be scaled as easily as they are constrained by the limited physical closed course infrastructure. Further, closed course tests with tens or hundreds of physical actors would be prohibitively expensive. They are feasible in mixed reality, however. Controllability. Simulation offers full control over the test conditions represented in the models. Physical infrastructure is more difficult to control. For example, test design may need to be adjusted to fit the limited road structure available at the closed course and some aspects like weather cannot be controlled. Mixed reality improves controllability at the closed course by allowing personnel to add some test elements and conditions virtually. Accuracy and precision. Simulation provides access to ground truth, which is not available in reality. Further, simulated agents move precisely and accurately as specified. 
In contrast, closed course tests with physical agents are subject to inaccurate and varying execution of behaviors, uncertainty in placement of agents and props, instrumentation errors, and uncontrolled environmental disturbances. Controlling actors automatically rather than manually improves accuracy and precision compared to manually controlled actors. Mixed reality offers the same precision and accuracy of the virtual aspect as simulation. Safety. Simulation testing is safe since collisions with virtual agents pose no risk. Closed course testing poses limited risk compared to open road tests. In general, near crash and crash situations need to be tested in simulation and closed course with surrogate or virtual agents in mixed reality. Access to automated driving system internals. Simulation needs access to automated driving system interfaces to connect them with sensor and actuator models. Closed course tests with physical agents treat the automated driving system equipped vehicle as a black box. Mixed reality requires an automated driving system interface to mix data at the desired points, such as raw sensor data, for example camera images, or higher level world model representations, such as bounding boxes of dynamic objects. While automated driving system manufacturers can implement support for data mixing in their software, this testing mode is not available to external evaluators. One potential solution would be to establish an industry standard for a diagnostic port for data mixing. We distilled 12 recommendations for choosing testing modes according to specific testing requirements, such as testing during development, testing for release to open road testing, self-certification testing, and independent comparative assessment. Here we present selected few. First, the scalability of simulation allows achieving test coverage in simulation that is vastly beyond of what physical tests can offer. Data recorded for unforeseen situations encountered during open road testing can be used to recreate these situations as scenario tests. The test objectives determine the necessary model fidelity, such as testing perception, planning, or vehicle control. An important decision is whether the full perception system is included in the simulation, which would necessitate high fidelity sensor and graphical environment models. One choice is to perform perception system testing using recorded and labeled real world data and use simulated perception as part of the driving behavior test as it was done in this paper. In this case, the perception simulation needs to be able to replicate the noise that the perception system would normally produce, such as false positive and false negative detections under the given environmental conditions, in order to test the robustness of the planning and control to perception noise. Model qualification is the process of establishing the validity of model for a particular analysis or testing task and objective. For example, flight simulators used to train pilots in civil aviation are subject to regulatory qualification standards which define suitability of the simulator for each training task. Similar task-specific and performance-based standards should be established for qualifying automated driving system simulation models. Simulation testing is valid only if the models used capture the relevant details of reality correctly. Consequently, the main purpose of physical tests is to verify and validate the models used in simulation so that the outcomes of the many simulation tests that are not replicated in physical tests can be trusted. Mixed reality testing allows gradual replacement of simulation models with their physical counterparts, such as replacing the vehicle model with the real vehicle and then selectively replacing other simulated agents with physical ones. Thus, mixed reality allows isolating the contribution of individual models to the test outcome and localizing potential modeling problems. Mixed reality testing allows executing complex scenarios with an unlimited number of virtual agents on the closed course, which is infeasible with physical agents. Consequently, mixed reality allows bringing these scenarios closer to reality, potentially with some of the agents being physical, before encountering these scenarios on the open road. In conclusion, Scenario testing enables systematic assessment of the capabilities of an automated driving system within its operational design domain. Simulation testing provided the most consistency over multiple test runs.
closed course testing uncovered limitations in the simulation model that affected the validity of the simulation test results. Mixed reality is effective in bringing some of the agility of simulation testing to the closed course. Automated driving system testing requires a combination of the already established simulation and physical testing methods, but mixed reality testing provides an additional promising mode to optimize the overall automated driving system testing approach. We would like to highlight a few resources used in this work. The automated driving system installed on the UW Moose is the result of the autonomous collaboration led by Professor Steven Waslander and Professor Krzysztof Czarnecki. Wise Sim Simulator is developed by WiseLab. A repository of example scenario tests, including the ones used in this work, is available. Users can download binaries of the automated driving system and the simulator and easily execute and edit the scenario test definitions. Finally, in the implementation and documentation for the GEO scenario are also available. Thank you for your attention. We welcome questions and comments.